Hello from AES 2016. I'm Marcel James with Antelope Audio, and we're here with the uh, famous, infamous Greg Wells, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks uh, for coming by, Greg. We're going to talk a little bit about our history with Greg, with Antelope, and uh, with the clocks, and more recently, some of the interfaces. But you started uh, a long time ago with Antelope. If you don't mind, just you know, kind of riff a little bit and give the, give the history. Uh, well, um, what's the, when's the very first time you reached out to me? Seven, seven years ago? Seven years seven. Six, seven years ago. Um, I, had, uh, I lived in complete ignorance in terms of clocking and was using, I think I was just coming out of my digi interfaces at the time. This was like mid-2000s. And uh, then I upgraded at one point to an Apogee Big Ben and definitely felt the difference and thought, okay, well, this is it. Like, this is as good as it's going to sound. And then I heard from Marcel, and he told me about the 10M, and very generously offered to bring it by my studio, which wasn't that far from, from where he was set up, so it was, it was easy for him, and he made it very easy for me, and said, uh, I'll do a painless AB switch, so you can go between the Big Ben and the 10M. Um, and I was in the middle of a mix, so it was sort of ideal timing, and it was a track that I had played all the instruments on and I was producing the record and I was mixing it so I really 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 intimately familiar with the what things should sound like um, and he switched over to the 10M and I hit play and I mean I just felt like I felt like a molecular melt in my body I felt like my face was going to slide off and I was trying to be all coy and not give away like how much I loved it because it's they're not cheap and I'm like I'm not going to spend ten thousand dollars on a digital clock like I can't even hear there's no audio passes through the thing what are you talking about and then uh, and I went we, we, we switched back to the Big Ben and, and you know no disrespect at all to Apogee but it was sad face for me and then we went back to the 10M and happy face and I couldn't I just had to make it work. <laughs> I like, was selling other pieces of gear to fund the purchase of the 10M and then had that for f five, six years and uh, very happy with it. Then I think I got a text from you saying, um, we have a new version of the 10M. Do you want to hear it? And I immediately said, look, I, I'm good. You know, I, 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 I'm really busy. I've got 10,000 children. I'm good with the 10M. Like, I don't need to make another change. That already kind of changed my world. And he said, I get all of that, but the 10MX really sounds quite special. And it, and it sounds a bit different. And you should at least hear it. And he offered the same sort of painless A-B test. So, you know, it was impossible to say no to. And he came over to the studio and we did the same thing. And I was in a similar situation where it wasn't... A, finished record but it was a song demo that I'd written with the artist and once again had played all the instruments and was kind of producing the demo and you know knew it really well and the artist's voice is really phenomenal it's a big rich kind of Sade sounding voice uh, it's, a, it's a nice voice to judge the sonics of something with so he hooked up the 10MX and I hit play and the song started, and it started with just uh, very stripped down, like just the side stick on the snare drum and uh, some guitar, acoustic guitar. And the side stick, I immediately noticed, felt like it was a bigger drum. Like, it felt like I heard more wood coming from the... It just felt like it was in front of me. And then her voice came in, and it was really wild. It was not the same experience that I had with the 10M six years prior to that. That one kind of felt like the ceiling had been taken off the control room. It felt like, oh, like it felt like an upward thing to me. The 10MX, to my ears at least, is a completely different vibe. I know how silly this sounds, but the only thing I can compare it to is like when I put on a good vinyl record, I have a good sort of entry-level audiophile turntable. And when I play stuff from that, that's the feeling I get. It was very similar to listening to the 10MX. It just, it all that detail's still there up top, but it frames it in a more kind of vinyl way. It felt like there's more tone 
on the notes, like more depth, not more low end at all, but just more information, more music coming out of the speakers. And, and also I noticed the high end, which I really liked on the 10M, was presented differently on the 10MX. It has a, it's all there, but it, it hits my ear in a more appealing way. I'm trying to be specific, it's hard. Like, uh, it just sounds better. It sounds better in the way that, that, that true analog, like a great, you know, 180 gram pressing of a vinyl record, the way that that presents information, like the high end or the low end, everything. This is a similar vibe. And, uh, like I said, everybody, you just you got to hear it. You have to hear it. Cause I can sit here and talk about. It. I can, I'm trying my best to explain my reaction to it. We uh, and thanks for that. And and I and I got to kind of witness and hear these things as well. And it was really a, it was it's it's eye opening for me too because I can sit and listen to my own room. But when you go and hear the material with somebody who, you know, cultivated every sound on that record. Um, it's interesting to hear you break it down, and I, you're hearing things that I, I would not notice had you not pointed them out beyond, you know, for me the imaging is very obvious and certain things with the low end, the enunciation of the bass notes, um, but all these other things that you're like pointing out as you're hearing it, it was quite amazing, so we thank you uh, for that, and I thank you for that education, really. Um, we also switched out your two-channel converter, and then, so if you could uh, talk a little bit about the Pier 2, and also taking the Orion Studio to Europe with you, and doing some production work there, if you could, could share some of that. So once I sort of, once the dust settled from that whole experience, where, okay, yes, I am going to switch out to the 10MX, and, and got to figure out a way to fund that purchase, um, then Marcel, Marcel, who, by the way, is a very talented mastering engineer. He's not just a salesperson for Antelope. You have ears, like a mastering engineer. You know, just like you can treat your eye to see stuff if you're working in a visual medium. Like, the ear is, the ear is slower than the eye, but the ear actually picks up more information. It's a big, there's a reason it's so big, you know? Um, and he knows what to listen for, and it's, it's, it's really helpful for me. I mean, in the same way, like... We're listening to PMC speakers behind us, and Maurice, who runs PMC here, is a badass engineer. Like he's mixed some great records, and it's so nice to interface with people that can really speak the language, and you understand, you know exactly what I'm talking about, you know, uh, which is helpful. Um, so he said, "You really should hear our two-channel converter." Um, and I said, "No, I'm fine. I've got." I had the, the Burl B2, I had it for years. It sounds great. I'm all good. And he offered the same thing. Look, you can't really say no to this. Let's just, I'll bring it by you. There's no obligation. Just to hear it. And hear it in your control room. In, you know, on the, I have PMC tower speakers. I forget what they're called. MXB2 something something. They're taller than me. There's no hiding on those speakers. Like you just... I'm not short. I'm 6'2". They're taller than me. And uh, and I love it because it's like sort of the Hubble telescope for me. I can really judge gear like this uh, or anything. Mixes. They're the only speakers where I don't have to worry about what it's going to sound like somewhere else. And that's never happened before to me. Anyway. Um, so we uh, we printed a mix. I, I This was like a year ago, so I'm a little fuzzy on exactly what the... We did a bunch of versions of it. It was the B2, and then there were three other versions after that. I put this all up on Gear Sluts eventually. B2 without the clock, B2 with the clock, and then the Pure 2 with the clock. We actually did a couple more too. We had, B, we had with Trinity, and then we took it out and went just 10MX. So there was a right. four or five friends. Yeah, we did all these different versions. and uh, And... I mean, you can see where I'm going with this. The results were not worse. The results were better. And actually fuller sounding than what I was using before, which is known for a very full sound. But, uh, and it has a very full sound, but this gave me even more information, and I was instantly addicted to it. And You've been printing everything through Pure 2. Since I print every mix through the Pure 2. And the, you can set up the Pure 2 where it's also the, uh, it's your in and your out. 
you don't need a second converter to then listen out of the computer. It, it's uh, one unit does both, and sounds better than any other unit I've ever heard. And then I run this songwriting um, event in France at a at a at a Miles Copeland, who's he was my first manager. He managed the police. His brother is Stuart Copeland, drummer in the police. And Miles managed Sting for 25 years after the police. And Miles, who's normally not very extravagant, bought a 14th century castle in the southwest of France in the late 80s. And he has held the songwriting event there ever since. It's one of his best ideas. It's very collaborative. Um, and he lets me run it now. So at once a year, I uproot. And uh, Marcel said, you really should take this interface with you called the Orion Studio. And I, I actually, what was I using before? I can't remember what I was using before. Again, like the bang for the buck factor is ridiculous. It sounds so good. Some of the mixes I've done at the castle in a room that's very much not a mix room have wound up being the final mixes. That's never happened before. There's just a clarity of like a, you know, to me, this is like, I've just been, th I'm speaking later today, I keep name dropping PMC, but for good reason. Um, and I was thinking about how, you know, if I was a race car driver, I wouldn't want to wear sunglasses that, like, I can't, where I can't fully see everything. I haven't I haven't let this metaphor out of the bag yet. I don't know if it's good, but like I want to be I want total clarity. I want to know exactly what's in front of me, what's coming at me, because I do this for a living. That's like everything rests on that. So I want to know what's going on, and I can choose to do whatever I want with it after it's captured. But I want complete accuracy, and I have never heard music sound like it does when you plug this stuff into it. It, it, it. it sounds more musical, it's more pleasing to my ear, I mix faster, I mix better, and, it, and it's nice to not have to think about it. Um, amazing, and thanks for all your comments and, and your endorsement for us.